Um, after the show, I took all of my money from the real world. So they give you $5,000. So after taxes, it was what? 32, 68 and 74 cents. I don't know why I know that number. Yeah, let's but- actually underscore that. You were paid, well, all original real worlders. The salary was five grand for the entire season which we're let's get back to let's get back to that but I just want yeah. people to really let that sink in yes so think about it five thousand U.S. dollars to go and film this show pre-tax and then and then be that person from the real world forevermore MTV could put it on in Brazil and in Israel in in Ireland they can air it anywhere in the country and the the words in perpetuity were in perpetuity were in the contract which, you know, you're a 22 year old, you don't know what any of that means, but you're like, yes, I'll sign this contract. And 5,000 lump US dollars was a lot of money at that time. It's a lot of money now, but it wasn't a lot of money to be Melissa from the real world for no 20 years. So 5,000 US dollars. I still can't wrap my head around this five grand for the whole season. Because- (laughs) Girl, me too. (laughs) Because I heard you say somewhere like, you should have snooky money at this time. Like what happened- but th- what happened contractually between the real world and Jersey Shore, which happened years later? Li- what transpired where suddenly they were throwing money at people? I, too, am very curious about that. But we came off of the show and Survivor had become a thing. And there was a real fear factor had become a thing. So there was a real, like, competitive edge added to reality TV. So it was no mm-hmm. longer, like, documentary style sitting around and talking. Um, but then the Hills came on Mm -hmm. and Jersey Shore came on, but what they changed was they filmed these people over and over and over again. So while we only have one season, they have three and four and five seasons. And, and just like the housewives franchise, as long as you are giving them television, you can, you know, earn your peach and keep coming back. So I think that changed, but also I didn't fully understand kind of the soap opera aspect of the hills because keep in mind we were young we were also watching mtv watching our show and them watching us like anybody that watched the hills would also know who danny kelly jamie matt they would know who we were but these people were on red carpets and we weren't so it was really a very strange juxtaposition and i can't lie and say i wasn't bitter um (laughs) chris and cavallari definitely has cash from the same experience that I had, it's very strange, but yeah. it's also a timing thing. I think everything about my life since real world has always been very close, but no cigar. <laughs> mm. How did you get the gig on girls behaving badly? Cause you were acting on that. Like you just auditioned and like, it's an unknown Chelsea handler. Like, is that what it was? It was just an audition at the time they were. At the time, it was Oxygen Network when it was still under Oprah. So they were looking for an all-female driven comedy show in the style of, of pranks. So you had to actually send in bits. So, you know, I had a whole sizzle reel of all these characters that I created and I got in the door. Um, I booked it, which was, you don't book stuff. Like that doesn't happen. Like it's so, it's hard to explain to people how hard it is to book something in LA. It just doesn't mm-hmm. happen. It was a total lottery ticket. So I booked it. And I originally was in so many of the skits, but then because real world is what it is, I was extremely famous from real world. And so when I'm with a mark and we've spent a lot of money producing this skit for today uh, and they're like, hold on, how are you Debbie from the flower shop if you're Melissa from the real world? So I started like ruining the marks. So they put me more of in a hosting role in Mm. like the subsequent seasons. So that show went on for five seasons. It was a really great run. It was a really great way for me to hone my, my, my humor, my written humor stuff, you know, because I had to like give ideas and stuff. And then also it was a way for me to really practice on camera hosting. And then I got into voiceover work from that too. So mm. that was a really good opportunity uh, for me. And the producers of that show went on to They do crazy big stuff on TV now. I wonder if they remember me. (laughs) What was what was like an unknown Chelsea Handler like? You're saying this was before she was doing stand up. When when I met her on that show, I had never seen her stand up yet. And you know, she and Chandrella were both doing stand up. So like, they would come to the set, they would Mm -hmm. do their thing, and then they'd be like, "Oh, we're gonna be at you know such and such room tonight." Um, Yeah, she was 
Chelsea Handler. She was her. She's exactly her. What was she talking? Like, do you remember anything that she would be like talking about on stage? Like what her act was like in those very early days? Like, do you remember anything? Um, no, but I, you know, you, vodka. Yeah, <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, was, Belvedere is kind of her brand. Yeah, she was, listen, she was, she was exactly who she is. She was Chelsea Handler. And I think, um, she had it been in there because I think she was part Jewish. She's yes. somebody's Jewish she, and somebody's Jewish. Mormon. Yes, she is part Jewish and Mormon. Yes, yes. So that was in her work. Yeah, I remember all of that. This, it, I mean, listen, it was such a, you know, when you're in it, you don't understand what you're looking at, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was such a, like, just seeing it reflected back on me. I, I mean, it, really what was so interesting was to see her uh, start doing work in like the social space of like how to be an anti-racist and stuff that mm -hmm. blew my mind because you know with time yeah you know people learn things and then they get a platform and they they and now she's dating joe coy but i'm like my mom you know you know filipino mom will keep tabs on every single person they've ever met if they have even just a tiny brush of fame i'm like yes go yay filipinos <laughs> uh, was there anything you auditioned for at that time that you didn't get that wound up being a huge project or wound up being like a huge show or a huge movie. And you were like, fuck, like I auditioned for that. And I didn't get it. And that could have like been my career. Yes. And I'm still to this day so upset about it. I can't, I can't, I can hardly talk about it. It's going to, it's going to sound so stupid, but I auditioned to be the yellow ranger. Um, on like power, power rangers. rangers. <laughs> <laughs> I had a call back and everything. I was very close. The The call to reject me was really sad. They're like, we really love you, Melissa. And, you know, we're just going to go a different direction. And like, that was actually the kind of fame I was hoping to have where it's, you're in a mask, nobody knows it's you. And then, you know, you have your few speaking parts, but who's really watching this? Little kids are watching this, but it's also steady work for years and years and years and years. And then it gets syndicated. Mm -hmm. So whoever the Yellow Ranger is now, I'm sure she has a lovely life somewhere in Vermont. And she has, you know, television is in the rear view of her life, but she's paid. And like, that's what I really wanted. I also got really close on, do you remember the TV guide had a channel? And there was a little lady that stood at the top yes. and she would tell you what's coming on next because you couldn't go on the internet to find out what time Golden Girls came on. I auditioned for that and I wanted it so bad. <laughs> I didn't get that one. And then, you know, the TV guide ended up going the way of the dodo bird. But what a time. 